Hi, this is Dan Bullard, uh, retired electrical engineer, sitting on the river again, doing a little video for you on harmonics. And I love harmonics. I figured this stuff out, and I got a few notes. Um, I'm just going to read from an article, or uh, quote an article that I uh, wrote some time ago. And you can read the article. It's on my website. Ignorance of experts. Um, I've got my heater here, so don't mind the hissing. That's just the heater. I'm trying to stay warm. It's friggin' January. Um, when you look at stuff on harmonics, there's idiots all over the place. And that goes all the way to MIT. Um, I'm constantly poking around for information on harmonics because I want to prove either that I figured this stuff out myself or that somebody else beat me to it. And so far, Nobody's beat me to it. Um, I found a website that showed uh, the course material for MIT, and they talk about harmonics and what harmonics do to create a wave. And that's really the way it works. Harmonics create the wave, not the other way around. Um, the wave is a chicken and egg kind of thing, OK? Oh, I love my heater. Um, in this article, MIT, and I'll put some pictures up for you, MIT showed these pictures and one showed a uh, sawtooth wave and the harmonics that create that. And I thought that was lovely, it was very nice. And then they showed a picture of a square wave and the harmonics that create a square wave. And that was totally wrong. They're fucking morons. Morons in training, I call them. MIT. I know there's some smart people from MIT, but I, when I was a young man, just got out of the Navy, teaching at a place called Technical Training Center, which doesn't exist anymore, one of my students was from MIT, and I swear to God, this was a technician school, low end, and he was an MIT graduate, and he was learning from me about electronics. That's pretty scary. Anyway, um, so what I did was I tried to replicate the things that MIT did, and I did that using an Excel spreadsheet. And the Excel spreadsheet is on my website. You can go find it, download it. I have several of them for experimenting. And you can download it, and you can try it out, and see what it does and it creates what I call a Bullard plot. And yes, I shamelessly named it after myself, just like the Bullard Law of Harmonics or the Bullard Harmonic Solution. And a Bullard plot shows the harmonics that go into a wave. And I can show that MIT is full of shit. Now, when MIT is full of shit, what are you going to do, you know? I mean, yes, it's a terrible thing I have to name all this stuff after myself, but it's a terrible thing that they don't fucking know what they're talking about. Bunch of idiots. So this wave, um, or this uh, tool, takes the wave, whatever wave you give it, and it creates the harmonics in time domain form. So you can see how they add together to create the wave in question. And it's a really good thing to do because, I mean, why wouldn't MIT come up with something like that? After all, it's just a friggin' Excel file, you know? What have they been doing? Butt-fucking each other continuously? Obviously. I mean, they're not doing anything worthwhile. So, what I'm showing is that MIT did a pretty good job with the sawtooth wave. And then they got to the square wave and they got lazy. And they chickened out and they just used the sawtooth wave for their example, which is complete horseshit. Now, you see my frustration with this stuff, right? I come up with this stuff. These guys say, oh, everybody knows that. Well, oh, really? The students at MIT looked at that and said, professor, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you stupid or something? Apparently not, because they published it online. Now, who's paying money for this, right? I don't have a degree, but these people 
go to MIT, they pay money for this, and they're getting this garbage? Idiots. So anyway, I call it Bullard Plot, and here's one for a distortion that shows how the distortion goes from the top, from the, the peak, and goes all the way down the wave. But interestingly, it doesn't look like it. That distortion is always the same amplitude, all the way down. And that's one of my problems. I have several problems with THC. One, one of the problems is that a fixed width distortion in a transfer function creates a different distorted area in a sine wave. It depends on whether it's at the very peak where the area is the greatest or in the center in the zero crossing. And when that happens, there's almost nothing, which is why Class B amplifiers had a pretty good reputation for a while at having very good THD. Because even a really bad distortion right at the zero crossing doesn't seem to impact a sine wave very much. But that assumes that the sine wave, that your input is always a sine wave. What if it's music? Okay, and then, so your music is coming along and, oh, somebody's on the phone, I gotta turn it down. So now we turn it down, and now that distortion causes a huge problem with that little tiny signal that you're listening to. And you say, wow, that sounds like shit. Normally when I'm listening to music, if I turn it up really loud, it sounds like shit. Yeah, that's because you're clipping. But if you turn it down, very quiet, and you get to the center, the zero crossing, suddenly, good music, which used to sound pretty good, sounds like shit. Because that little distortion there is not as little as you thought. So anyway, take a look at the article. It's called The Ignorance of Experts 2. And you'll see what I'm talking about. These guys that claim, oh, everybody knows that shit. Bullshit. They're fucking idiots. Anyway, thanks for your time. See you later.